not this one, not this one. Okay, so as we know, um, DNA replication, which is a semi-conservative in nature, uh, which has been discovered by many scientists with this N15, N14 experiment, uh, Meslin experiment, I saw further the scientist's name, who did this blender experiments uh, with different isotopes of nitrogen. Uh, in order to identify that whenever the replication is happening, your 50% of your, your, your data is being transferred to the offsprings half half so this is basically a biological inheritance which is a fundamental process occurring in all living organisms to copy their dna so each strain each strand that they are they are in this our parent dna they serve as a template in order to reproduce two um, yeah, semi conservative complementary strands so I will not go in details now about this uh, in this DNA replication, but in quick uh, view, um, I just want to say that first you have your DNA helix, yeah, double standard helix structure, which is having this three prime to five prime end, right? So from here, if this is the five prime end is here, and it's going along this one. Yeah. So other end would be your three prime end. Yeah. On another hand, if this is a five prime end, so this will be the other end of it would be five prime end. So first of all, if in order to open up your DNA, uh, topo isomerase that the first enzyme that comes it starts to open up your DNA right and then all your, your nucleotide base pairs which are tightly joined together by hydrogen bonding uh, they have been broken by the enzyme helicase right and, and in order to stabilize your nucleotides that they do not get out of the strand from the template this is known as your uh, single standard binding proteins so they will come and attach there to make a balance for it. Single standard binding proteins. And they will be known as helicase here. Yeah, so we have discussed so far three enzymes, topo isomerase, which unwind it, and then helicase will let it separate them. And the single strand binding proteins try to make a stabilization of your nucleotide proteins. So here we have a fork shape, replication fork is created like. We have for food the replication for uh, and then it will make two strands that is one would be the lagging strand and another would be the leading strand the one with the leading strand here what will happen from the previous way your don't dna polymerase mostly one actually dna polymerase here is showing lambda it will start producing corresponding uh, nucleotides which were empty in the direction of 5 prime to 3 prime end. Mm -hmm. In the 5 prime to 3 prime end. And always your DNA replication, whenever it is happening, it is always happening from 5 prime to 3 prime end. Always remember that. So this would be your DNA leading strand. But on the other side, there will be a lagging strand which will move, your DNA polymerase will be moving on the left side. But in between, there will be some gaps will happen. There will be some gaps. It will be not making very nice as it should do. So in that case, your ochre, that, that the gaps and the, in these broken uh, 
template of your DNA. These will, these were found out by the scientists in the Japan called Okazaki. So on the name of him, these fragments are called as Okazaki fragments, right? Um, and then, um, in order to make them come back and, and join them together, your always DNA ligase is always there to join them. So DNA ligase will come and will fix this part. And initially, uh, in order to understand your your reaction, so your RNA primer is is get connected. RNA primer get connected in order to understand which nucleotide has to be there, and then the DNA primase start to produce the same thing with that enzyme. So in this way, this is a very nice and quite apt summary of DNA replication. If somebody is, is going through some molecular biology class at the moment, for them, just explain all these enzymes, all these diagrams. Otherwise, uh, there is complete two hours lectures for that. DNA replication in prokaryotes, DNA replication in eukaryotes, and there's a difference between them and what kind of enzymes are being used in, in between two, what is the difference between them. It's a whole complete lecture about that. So we will not go in details today. So that's it. Uh, the basics of your DNA. Now, as we have discussed the transcription yesterday, this is just in the um, subjective way in the written manner. That is the process of creating an equivalent RNA copy of the sequence of DNA. So remember an equivalent RNA copy as compared to DNA, neither more, neither less, just an equal amount of the same. And transcription is the first step leading to the gene expression. So DNA is going for RNA that will be known as transcription. And RNA could go back, it will be your reverse transcription. So during transcription, a DNA sequence is read by RNA polymerase mostly, uh, which produces complementary antiparallel RNA strands. So transcription results in RNA complement that includes uracil instead of thiamine. And okay, we have discussed this in detail already before. Uh, yeah, one thing here is that during this uh, process, DNA mostly. Whenever the RNA polymerase is getting attached to the uh, complementary strand, uh, so DNA is read from 3' prime to 5' prime end during the transcription. And the complementary RNA is always created in the direction of 5' prime to 3' prime end. So complementary RNA will be always be produced from the 5' prime to 3' prime end. So only one of the two DNA strands called the template strand is used for transcription because RNA is one single standard and the DNA standard is called the st uh, coding strand. So here this is the coding strand on the top with the promoter sequence and this will be your um, DNA is coming out, RNA is coming out. So at the end in the C figure you can see that you have very nice uh, the single stranded RNA and also a little bit of double stranded bonds are being made. This is hairpin loop, this is called as like a hairpin uh, structure is made here and hence you have your RNA. And during this time there is RNA processing is happening in which our, our uh, chromosomal DNA, it has exons part, exon 1, 2, 3, also an intron parts, right, intron 1 and 2. And during the transcription that is uh, the RNA synthesis, all these intron parts that is in splicing will be removed. So kicked out, kicked out. And then in the messenger RNA, we have exon 1, exon 2, and exon 3. And RNA synthesis, and this is known as your RNA synthesis and processing. This is very summary, uh, and I'm just telling in a very nutshell this process. This also is a very elongated subject if somebody is studying about molecular biology which take around five to six lectures to understand this part only. And another thing, uh, the reverse transcription, which is possible in the uh, 
in the presence of reverse transcriptase enzyme and this is happening mostly in the in the viruses where your DNA uh, from from your RNA complementary DNA copy is made from your RNA HIV RNA your complementary DNA is is made and yeah so that's the reverse transcription so this is the uh, as we have discussed the central dogma of life central dogma so the blue color uh, what we are seeing is here this is DNA replication this is transcription this is translation so all these process three process they belong to the general group and there is also special process is also happening that the RNA could produce uh, your DNA with the help of reverse transcriptase enzyme yeah. or RNA could also self replicate in order to produce so these red color things are the special cases to be known in the central dogma and this blue colors uh, line that we are seeing here are the general cases. So our central dogma itself is divided into two different parts. Now comes after that transcription we have discussed in quite details um, comes your translation which is a first process in order to produce your uh, protein biosynthesis. In this, you have a large and small subunit of ribosomes uh, on which your mRNA is binded and able to produce amino acid chains uh, or polypeptide chains which later on get folded into the quaternary structure in order to be an active protein. So here we can see that process in this very nice cartoon here that your ribosome was there. yeah your large subunit and small subunit being, being there and this is your messenger RNA from 5 prime to 3 prime end right um, this is your ribosome here and your messenger RNA has these three uh, codons together like valine, alanine and glycine so let's say we have alanine here so the corresponding tRNA will come attached to the anticodon part towards the mRNA and your alanine will get attached to the valine, the previous polypeptide chain. And in this way, you have a polypeptide chain of your amino acids. And then again, glycine will come and join here again and then again. And then at the stop codons, it will stop. It will not go further. It will say, okay, the whole protein that need to be produced is being produced now. There is no, no need to go further action. So this is very nice table if uh, comes to you in MCQs or to remember all these amino acids. So you can remember them uh, with the help of this table. So you, what you have to do is just on the left hand side on the first base pairs you just write U, C, A, G. Horizontal U, C, A, G. Then in vertical, you will write the all four letters U, C, A, G. Then what you have to do is take the first letter from here, second base from here and third base pair from here in each four uh, lines. So U, U, U. U, U, U. Then U, U, C. U, U, C. Then U, U, A. U U A and list goes on list goes on so we characterize them together U U C and U U C as phenyl alanine and U U A and U U G is characterized as leucine the same way goes for in the most left box is the valine the alanine first remember all the amino acid group which characterize all four together and remember their name so this like serine S, leucine L, proline, yeah, threonine, alanine, valine, arginine, glycine. Yeah. Just remember uh, whenever you get this chance you made these boxes start putting these names like this is serine, this is proline, this is threonine, this is valine, this is alanine, this is leucine, this is arginine, this is glycine. Yeah, and then started to produce, find out your start codon and stop codon. 
your start codon is your methanine this comes in mcqs many times that is your a u g and the stop codons are your three codons u a a u a g and u g a you make these as second priority afterwards then you can make uh, writing the ones which are in the um, two groups like histidine glutamine aspartame lysine aspartic acid glutamic acids serine here also arginine and so on so this is some way uh, also cysteine never forget cysteine one day if i have time i can share my own phd project about cysteine if somebody is interested about cysteine uh, how cell is work uh, how um, cysteine um, disulfide bridges play a role in the physiology of human heart um, i will be happy to share some knowledge about that in later lectures so any questions still here we have discussed since our class has been started about first of all dna replication uh, transcription um, translation um, then genetic codes yeah so all things are refreshed and clear bachche only then we go ahead there's a five time five minutes i don't know two or one or two minute lagging so i usually get the answers bit later so i can wait okay so this was uh, very basics is going so soon it might be uh, get complicated please let me know uh, we can stop it there and i will repeat that thing again it depends uh, shivani uh, sometimes it do sometimes not it depends what kind of functions it's going to do okay you keep uh, send me the questions i will come back and will try to answer them so yeah whosoever is preparing for gate exam please take a print out of it um this is actually for the phd or you're doing your dissertation um this amino acid table um it's always being used in most of the cases and sometimes you need to uh, remember these each amino acids on your tips okay ca is there ca ac is there then the some for post translational modification or for the proteomics part so they are quite quite essential a whole phd uh could be made on these genetic codes actually 3 or 4 years of phd could be easily made on these genetic codes okay so now comes the um more advanced topic within this field so we have discussed about the basics of our uh, molecular biology now within that after we have discussed dna together this dna uh what is it make it's make a genome uh so genome has the whole hereditary information of one person yeah it is either encoded in either in dna or many types of viruses in rna so it includes your both genes and known coding sequence of the dna and mostly in the whole genome your 98% are the region which doesn't code for protein yeah 98% of your whole genome doesn't code for anything it doesn't make any coding only 2% only 2% or even less than 1% in every human being that is your our genome is coding the protein part so you can see that rest of the genome what is its use even scientist doesn't know they find it out okay uh, th there is uh, there is a function of it but what is the use of it nobody knows so only the 2% uh, is the one which is fruitful to us arrest no no nothing 
so this is very nice uh, this is also in, in uh, if somebody want to have advanced studies or PhD or postdoc or uh, field of in genomics there is a field called comparative genomics in which we compare the whole genome of uh, one species with another species and we make conclusion uh, on the evolutionary base that how the lower species have been generated to that that higher species uh, because of which gene and then we find those genes which are comparable between these two so that is known as your comparative genomics which is quite hot topic though nowadays earlier uh, basically in 2003 it was the human genome project was done completely in, in USA I think in 2003 till till 2003 there was no bioinformatics there was no um, and there was not so much of NCBI data there was nothing was happening much at the at the PubMed and there was not so much research papers were there and there was nothing everything was so dull and, and so boring in the in the field of science of of the molecular biology biotechnology biochemistry because nobody knows about the human genome and how it works but since after 2003 it has been discovered there was abrupt increase in the research papers uh, the whole world actually got changed everything uh, it, it was was so easy everyone was able to identify diseases afterwards everyone was uh, like there was kya kahenge bahut badi halchal ho gayi thi hamari scientific community mein ki it was yeah excellent work was discovered with after the first finishing of the human genome project and because of that uh, many things were were answerable many things were answerable which was not before so we can see that uh, the first one the human the it was a bacteriophage lambda the first genomic project was was discovered the whole genome was discovered was the uh, lambda so this sometimes comes the um, in the mcqs so mostly students what they do they just write down as yeast or human influenza but no it was a bacteriophage lambda it was it was discovered that time and here i just want to make make this table in able to understand um, between your size base pairs and your chromosome number yeah just check these two things uh, between each species so human mouse fruit fly arabidopsis plant roundworm yeast e coli and bacteria human haemophilus influenzae so these are all actually the target model groups because what we can see here is that in the mouse uh, that's why we do most of the research on the mouse because uh, the 40 chromosomes and it has 46 chromosomes so almost the similarity is quite good and most of the genes are also very similar yeah and the gene number is almost similar 25,000 25,000 this is a size base pair that is is 3.2 billion and here is 2.6 billion yeah, that's why whatever the research that has been uh, discovered over the mouse on the mouse model uh, is then go for the replication over the human medicine for the human uh, diagnosis then comes a fruit fly which is a very very good model group for the genetics somebody is interested in the genetics part this is the best model because they multiply very fast the reproduction cycle is very fast and you get results the n number very nice you can do the, uh, uh, the experiments uh, four or five times because whenever you're doing any experiment whenever you are doing an experiment it has to be done at least three times the results need to be coming out out of three times maximum you can do four to five it's always good which is ethical but ethical minimum three should be there then you take the average of that yeah then you take average of that so in that case uh, this was the best model uh, even I had worked a little bit with them but it's a bit frustrating work because these flies are so tiny so tiny 
you need to work like a tailor i have to admit um it it, it is uh, if somebody is interested to go for fruit fly be be aware that you need to be very um sharp and you have to work very concisely yeah word is concisely here then in the plant the model that we use is arabopsis thaliana so any uh, transgenic crop you want to create any um gmo crop you want to create or any trait that you want to see in your plant it needs to be tested in your arabopsis thaliana then round worms yeah this is these round worms and yeast they are very hip in usa at the moment i was at the uh, there's a gordon research conferences are happening uh, in which most of the nobel prize winner emeritus professors big notch people they are coming for that so i got a chance as a scholarship to visit that place in italy for around one week and it was pleasurable to meet these such big people big scientists from usa and 80% of those scientists they were work on the round worms or on the yeast the reason why is you can see here that um as compared to the human uh, human um, say the homo sapiens the humans the size base pair is around 97 million and the chromosome number is 12 but in the yeast it's 12.1 million the uh, size uh, the the base pairs but it's 32 the chromosome number in the yeast was 32 so they were uh, very highly acceptable as a model yeah so these these uh, this this table uh, itself explains a lot from the research perspective if somebody is interested in the phd uh, just think what group is working never ever think that oh that group is just working on the bacterias i don't want to join that group or that group is just working on the round worms no 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 that work is group uh, group is working on the fruit fly or there is also zebra fish as a model those who are undergraduate at the moment for them it might be new thing to uh, listen them but one uh, who are into their post graduate ms msc is done and they are doing their projects they will understand that while in, in the lab so these are the various models uh, you you work and get your experiments done and go for the data yeah so i hope um things going fine so far okay so, so just and you see in the bacteria uh, your chromosome number is just one so these comes to your prokaryotes and the chromosome number is just one even the base pair is quite less 1.8 4.6 so it will be very hard actually if somebody wants to compare these uh, their genomic with the homo sapiens but if somebody is interested with the prokaryote studies so they are the best model so why genome analysis is required so the prediction of genes in uncharacterized genomic sequences just a second okay and we can obtain the sequence of as many genomes as possible um we can we can make the genetic modification and we can develop new varieties and very faster rates like bt cotton bt bingels um all your transgenic crops that are coming into the market okay we are done with the theory part now all theory has been covered uh, by now so now it's time for tools yeah the what are the basic tools that we are using in molecular biology so in this case i will touch uh, most of the molecular biology tools one by one uh, but we will continue with each one of them in our upcoming days yeah so today we going to just have uh, a brief feel of all these molecular biology techniques that are available so first 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 is gel electrophoresis so we will have um in one day a uh, different types of gel electrophoresis like your horizontal vertical zone electrophoresis paper electrophoresis 
pulse gel electrophoresis we will discuss about them in each day uh, blotting techniques we will discuss so but today um, I'm gonna just give a little like pinch of a salt for each technique not in details yeah so don't get exaggerated or something or oh, these techniques were just finished within one day so I will teach all these techniques in our upcoming lectures in details also so nothing to rush about so basically uh, gel electrophoresis is done to separate your DNA RNA and proteins because as we have discussed the importance uh, in our previous uh, lectures that how important your DNA and RNA and proteins are how they are making the basic foundation of our uh, machinery of our body so in order to identify if something goes wrong in the body something is not not uh, working good so these techniques help us to identify them how let's say um, there's a DNA fingerprinting yeah so in that if somebody did a crime scene for example so we can have the crime scene uh, specimens let's say here and from the the suspected one and then we can compare the DNA of both of them if it's come out to be same yeah voila we have find the victim who has done that crime so in that way our these tools for molecular biology they are playing a very very vital role um, then in agros gel electrophoresis uh, DNA and RNA can be separated on the basis of size by running the DNA through an agros gel so here we can see your DNA moves from negative to the positive electrode. DNAs are separated by the putting them between the gel of two electrodes that is negative electrode and positive electrode. And DNA strands are separated by the size. And one thing I can see here that the DNA is in this figure they have been coated as negative. Can anyone tell me why negative DNA is negative? If it is negative, uh, yeah, it, it is negative. And why is it negative? Let me know. Um, then we go further. What is the reason behind that our DNA is negative? Which molecule, I give you a hint, which molecule of the DNA gives a negative charge to our DNA? Yes, Shivam, very nice. Anyone else? Right, it's because of the phosphate group it's because of the phosphate group the DNA moves from negative side to positive sides and we are able to identify um, various DNA parts and results is out there um, further um, so if there is this is the ladder so we can identify that after exposing over the UV light DNA is visible and this is 500 base pairs of DNA is there and same way uh, as the DNA has been separated on the agros gel electrophoresis your proteins could be separated with the help of SDS page gel that is sodium dodecyl sulfate uh, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis uh, <laughs> it's a it's a tongue twister tell anyone <laughs> ask your parents or friends before sleeping uh, <laughs> to spell this name SDS page sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis uh, just say it for five times it's a good tongue twister and in case and you will also remember sometimes we tend to forget that so SDS page yeah jokes apart let's come to the reality uh, <laughs> because these uh, our scientific terms uh, they, they are actually so long and you can use them as a tongue twister to just give it to your friend just tell me tell me what is the <laughs> speak this for the five times and this day it will be uh, might fumble so okay yeah so in this they also proteins are separated on the basis of electric charge uh, that's why it's also known as 
टू डी जेल इलेक्ट्रोफोरसिस वी विल गो थ्रू वन प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम द बायोराज देर इज वन कम्प्लीट वर्चुअल लैब फॉर ट्वेंटी मिनट्स एंड वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट टू डी जेल इन कम्प्लीट डिटेल्स दैन कम्स योर पॉलीमरेज चेन रिएक्शन दैट इज द एज वी नो दैट इज डन इन ऑर्डर टू हैव मल्टीपल मिलियंस कॉपीज ऑफ वन पर्टिकुलर टैंपलेट ऑफ डी एन ए विदाउट एनी ऑल्ट्रेशन टू इट सो ऑल्सो दे विद इन दिस पॉलीमरेज चेन रिएक्शन विच इज मेनली डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द हीटिंग या हीटिंग एंड कूलिंग दर इज ए डी नेचुरेशन डी ए रिमेंबर दिस डी ए एज ए शॉर्ट फॉर्म डी नेचुरेशन एनीलिंग एंड एन एलोंगेशन दीज थ्री स्टेप्स बिलोंग्स टू योर पी सी आर सो एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट इट रन फॉर अराउंड लाइक थर्टी फाइव टू फोर्टी टाइम्स दिस इज रन एंड देन यू गॉट द कॉपीज आउट ऑफ इट सो पी सी आर हैज मैनी वेरिएशंस लाइक रिवर्स ट्रांसक्रिप्शन पी सी आर फॉर द एम्पलीफिकेशन ऑफ आर एन ए रियल टाइम पी सी आर दिस क्वान्टिटेटिव पी सी आर विच अलाउ फॉर द क्वान्टिटेटिव मेजरमेंट ऑफ द डी एन ए और आर एन ए मॉलिक्यूल्स so this is the pcr this is not the the bestest applications maybe on the pcr i want to switch to an another presentation i think students we still uh, anyone has uh, any class afterwards because i would like to continue uh, until we finish this pcr today because otherwise it will take two months to me to complete your course uh yeah so can we have one 10 to 10 minutes more lecture today is it fine because if you just left me then it's, it doesn't make sense to continue further otherwise we do this pcr next day i didn't notice the time um if we are good in the flow of the lectures today we continue the same thing just want to finish with pcr today and it will go for like 9:15 this class then If you have any classes further uh, after nine, then we stop it now. Just share. I want uh, maximum. Okay, some students have classes of principle of genetics. Okay, no worries. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, so I have to be within this time limits actually. Okay, uh, this PCR topic I cannot uh, start today. because i want to play one video also about that um so no we we will be done till here i think i haven't shared with you these videos so far so i will share the videos oh sorry the ppt what is this bachche okay i understand uh, you want to uh, this is lecture is going on and in between you are sharing your own stuff i mean i can say that you are not into the lecture so much serious so i might have to omit from the whole batch sorry to say this shubhang and prateek mishra um so please maintain some decorum you want to share your own things you can share it afterwards you are most welcome uh it's good for another students to have to know what some other stuff but please uh, this this platform is for the classes and we maintain that uh, decorum yeah thank you okay so we start with pcr tomorrow um some basics and we will go over the virtual lab of the pcr with the same right uh, and then dna isolation how dna is isolated virtually also 
you will understand from the uh, perspective of pipette how pipette is used uh, and, and we go with that yeah so that's it for today um, we see us then tomorrow at the same time 8 and we continue with the unleft part okay then thank you Yeah, Shalini uh, Mohapatra. This is, um, I want to discuss about this reverse transcriptase PCR and real time PCR in our uh, upcoming lectures. Don't worry. Uh, we will have a complete difference between them. We will have uh, on the third, uh, third uh, day of our lectures in the recombinant DNA technology. So I will show you how the COVID, uh, in COVID, this real time PCR we are using. So we will go in detail about that. So don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, it's uh, and one more thing. Uh, it's okay if students wants to share these things, but please share them uh, not during the class. Afterwards, it's okay. Um, that will be fine then. Okay, or if you want to share these things, please discuss the faculty first or to the higher authorities. Um, otherwise, we need to stop. Yeah, this is not fine. Okay, then thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Take care. Good night. Bye bye. Uh, Shrishti, I did actually. Uh, if you check it, introduction in the MBBT June batch. And the aims, oh, I didn't actually, you're right. But I think I had shared with you earlier. Yeah, it's it's uh, no no structure of DNA. Yeah, it's not okay. It has been shared, and in the June batch also it has been shared. Okay, bye bye.